It's been a hugely turbulent few years in the world of UK politics. We've had Brexit, uh, numerous elections and almost as many different prime ministers. Professor of politics Matthew Goodwin has long tried to make sense of it uh, and his latest book is called Values, Voice and Virtue, The New British Politics. And Matthew joins me now. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for sending us the book as well. Um, do you want to just explain to us what is the key thesis of your new book? Yeah, so basically we've had 10 years of political chaos. We've had the rise of populism, Brexit, Boris Johnson, the fall of the Red Wall, this realignment of our politics. All I'm saying is, what on earth caused all of that? And the argument essentially is that we have a new elite in Britain, not just in politics, but across much of the media, creative industries, cultural institutions, which no longer reflects the values of the, of the, the wider country, no longer really gives lots of voters a feeling that they have a voice in the institutions, mm. and is embracing this very toxic identity politics, which I don't think actually is going to bring people back together. I think it's going to push us apart. And so many people do now feel politically homeless. They don't know who they're going to vote for next time. Where has this come from? I mean, it didn't always used to be the case, did it? As you say, this is a relatively recent development. Yeah, well, actually, about 60% of people out there feel that neither left nor right really mm. reflect their values. And one of the reasons I wanted to write the book was partly to say, actually, I, that, you know, I wanted to sort of <laughs> represent some of those views and opinions and just try and put across a different view about why we're here. And I think, you know, one of the things that's happened is over the last 20 years, a lot of these cultural issues, identity issues, immigration, uh, gender, uh, national identity have become much more important in politics, whereas perhaps in the older days used to be much more about economics. And what's happened is this new elite that's risen to sort of represent the institutions just thinks very, very differently from most voters on these issues. They've really gone all in on this radical, progressive worldview which really isn't shared by the vast majority of people out there. And let's take the example of Brexit. You know, 70% of Labour constituencies voted to leave, and that yet you had a Labour Party that decided to run on a manifesto where they said, we'll make you vote again because you probably got it wrong. The, the public had to watch Parliament effectively try to undo uh, the largest democratic mandate in British history. This doesn't... It's almost like they're living in this bubble and they don't get that people can see what they're up to. I think, well, also on Brexit, don't forget, 3% of Labour MPs actually campaigned to leave, whereas 150 Labour-held seats voted to leave. I think, that, I think there is a bubble element going on here, but I think also what we've seen is essentially the political and the media class double down on themselves. Uh, all of the institutions really are now disproportionately dominated by people who tended to go to the same universities, but also on these cultural questions tend to hold the same sets of values. So if you look at things like, you know, how we're told about, um, you know, the rise of gender identity, or we're told that, you know, British history is primarily bad, it's negative, or if you look at the, the discussion around small boats, that actually we should just be more relaxed about this, we shouldn't try and control our national borders. Look, most people don't think that way. Most people are very concerned about these issues. They want their governments to solve them. And I think this increasingly radical class that is dominating the institutions is actually losing touch with a lot of people out there in the country. And to be honest, Andrew, I mean, I'm, the reason I wrote this book as well is I'm concerned because I think if you look at the last 10 years, you know, we don't want to become America, I don't think. We don't want the tribalism, we don't want the, the polarisation. But if we don't actually manage to close these divides, that is where we're going to head, end up. We're going to end up in a much more tribal place. Is part of the problem that there isn't that much to distinguish between the Conservatives and Labour insofar as Labour clearly have bought into this very identitarian worldview, but a lot of the radical cultural shifts over the past 12 years have actually ha happened under, well, under the Conservatives. I mean, so exactly. really, you can't vote for anyone who would you know, get, get us out of that. Well, there is, a, there is a new consensus in British politics, which is shared by both the left and the right. I mean, both basically were instinctively opposed to uh, uh, Brexit, um, mm. were instinctively opposed to lowering immigration, were inst and are instinctively opposed to pushing back against this radical progressivism in the institutions. They view it as sort of cultural politics. They don't want to go near it. Um, and I think many voters really are looking at the parties and thinking, well, I, I don't share your values anymore. Mm. You don't represent me anymore. And I think, therefore, unless we can find a way of dealing with that and giving people a sense that they are in the national conversation, they have a voice. You know, you look at the BBC homepage every day. I mean, it's like this sort of worldview of the 10% or the 15%. And that's yes. roughly where radical progressives are. They represent about 15% of the country, but they dominate many of the institutions. And doesn't that lead in a lack of trust? 
for these major institutions, what they call a legitimation crisis. Well, that's what we're seeing. I mean, yeah. you're seeing trust in established legacy media decline. You're seeing trust in parliament and political parties decline. Um, the big winner at the next election, personally, I think, won't be the Labour Party. The big winner will be apathy. It will be lots of people saying, look, I'm not going to um, vote at this election. I tried to change the system through all of these things that we've gone through over the last 10 years. It's still the same. It's still pro-globalisation, pro-migration, increasingly sort of intolerant of people who hold different views and beliefs. Um, people are looking at what's happening in schools and universities and this sort of imposition of this political dogma, and they can't see anybody who's going to speak up and do anything about it. So my fear is either people just withdraw from the political system en masse, or we end up going down some other road of populism where somebody stands up and says they are going to do something about it. And none of those outcomes, personally, I don't think are particularly good. Well, uh, Matthew, your book is called Values of Voice and Virtue. That's available now. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. me on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it.